We are now two decades from the end of the Cold War and dissolution of the Soviet Union. That's time perhaps to discuss again those times and the crucial role you were playing in those events. And it's a great honor to have you here to reflect on those events. So the first question will be, you know already the trajectory Russia has taken during this last 20 years. Do you regret the passing of the Soviet Union? I always thought that it was possible to preserve the Soviet Union, and I still think so today. We came too late with our reforms, and by that time, processes had already ripened in the republics, whereas they had their own elites, their own press, own economy, and own intelligentsia. They could do everything and undertook everything. They were able to discuss and take active part in every aspect of life. We, meanwhile, continued to keep the maximum number of policy areas under control at the central level. We should have begun sooner giving the republic's powers to decide everything except for the strategic issues, such as defense, foreign policy, and, well, I will not list everything. All of these things that were to be the life of a big new federation. This is what we should have done earlier, not pull it apart, in other words, not mis dismantle it. They think they performed a great deed by taking the Soviet Union to pieces, but now we don't know how to give them some kind of uniting form and integration and make use of the opportunities that overall have still not disappeared. This will come up again too. So yes, I do regret it very much. As for what is happening today, I think this is in large part connected to what Boris Yeltsin said. No, we will do it fast and act decisively. What's the point of shuffling about when everything is clear? In just two to three years, four at the most, we will be among the three most prosperous countries in the world. I listened to that and thought to myself, it's all no more than castles in the air. That's the way that reckless actions take shape. The Soviet Union did offer prospects still to those who lived there, and there could have been a future if it had modernized itself and adapted to the new challenges. I do regret it very much. You said that the Soviet Union could be preserved. So what was the major trigger that brought its collapse? Well, it was the nomenclatura above all. The country changed dramatically after the free and competitive election of 1989. Everything started moving and the results were soon clear. There seemed to be a lot of discontent with the Communist Party and the way they were doing things, but this was really discontent with the nomenclatura, which had been keeping their seats for decades. It should be mentioned that it was they who made it possible for Boris Yeltsin to come out again to the forefront and to return to politics. I did not have the desire to have him return to big politics. I would say now that I was foolish to have been so soft on him. He is not a friend of mine and uh, our families are not on friendly terms. We did not even know each other very well. I could see that for Yeltsin, as I already said in one interview, the most important thing in his life, his greatest passion, even greater than passion for women, was power. Power was his greatest passion. Of course, the reforms ran into difficulties. Everyone was affected. There was plenty of discontent all around, and we had to try to keep a hold. I was not focused by any means on using force. My credo was the reforms without blood, reforms through political means. Things need to be done in decent and humane fashion, then you have changes, then you have a new government, a new system that treats people humanely. But this failed. There was blood along the way, but at least we managed to avoid civil conflict and a civil division within the country as a whole. I do not think I'm a dreamer, since I have seen much. Everyone wants to reproach me for this life I have lived, but I'm proud of it. 
I think I'm right. Because these attempts to pick on me and make me feel bad fail in the end. People gradually start to understand. I think that attitudes are once again starting to change now, and people are starting to look at Perestroika and at me differently now. Was there anything the United States could have done differently in order to change the trajectory Russia has taken during the last 20 years? I do not think we can forgive the Americans for the attitude they took towards our internal affairs and the events in our country. Our country had endured so much and proven itself as a reliable partner, a country and people able to sacrifice. There is no other people that is capable of such sacrifice. I see how the Americans wage war. They use planes and ships, shoot and destroy others in order to preserve their own soldiers' lives. But our lives are no less valuable. I think that the Americans could have made a clearer stand of friendship at that tough moment in our country's life and from a global political point of view I would say they could have taken a more responsible position. Cheney, Cheney the leading oil industry people, Bob Gates and the General Scowcroft. Generally speaking, I thought of him better, but judging by what I'm reading, he was in exactly the same entourage, same group, when in office. What they were imposing, literally urging and pressuring the George Bush administration to do. Gorbachev is defending his improved socialist system, and Yeltsin proposes to replace the Union, to get freedom from it, to let it fall apart. This corresponds to our interests. I'm not saying that I can tell with certainty that President Bush took this position, but it did have an influence. It was looming over him. Has America lost its supremacy? Are we witnessing the collapse, the decline of America as a superpower? Da. Yes. I think that the moment when America miscalculated was when the Soviet Union ceased to exist. They behaved as though they sympathized and were saying things, etc., but under the table they were rubbing their hands. How wonderful! That is when the delusion began. And America decided to build us a new empire. And of course, I would like to talk about the Security Council and the United Nations. I don't like what the UN looks like now. It is falling behind. And when it falls behind, then high-risk international figures, such as uh, George W. Bush, appear. He does not feel the need for a mandate. Everyone takes to the street, even his own people take to the streets opposing the Iraq war, not to mention Europe. Millions protest, but to him this is not important. Well, how is that possible? How have you understood the world situation in this way? It has changed so much so that you could simply behave obnoxiously. No, this cannot be accepted. This means we need to continue searching. Of course, I am accused here in Russia that it is almost as if I work for America. My book was coming out. I had already submitted it for publication. In 1996, there were supposed to be presidential elections, and I took part in them. I was in St. Petersburg at one enterprise, and my colleagues who were accompanying me said, Mikhail Sergeyevich, there is a girl who has been running around for half the day, and she would like to ask one question. I said, well, let's see. Indeed. It was a young, nice-looking girl. 
I asked, what is your question? Mikhail Sergeyevich, do you still work at the CIA? I looked and thought, gosh, it is indeed all the experienced people who drag down a person still in her formative phase, and that's what they throw in. Looking at her, I felt so sorry for her. I did not start explaining things and instead said, yes, I worked there. Her eyes widened, as if asking, but why? They pay well. I turned and left. Are Putin and Medvedev taking Russia in the right direction? I think each of them, of course, has the desire to be the leader in such difficult, critical and historical times. Each wants to lead his people to the better shores. They are different. President Medvedev put forward the idea Russia forward. And then if we summarize it, uh, Vladimir Putin, considering what he is doing, has the slogan Russia back. They desire to retain power, they desire to maintain the status quo. But I think it must be said that if We now don't make use of time, in the next five to six years, we would end up in a situation from which it would be difficult to emerge. That is, for a long time to come, we will become pillaged as a raw material country. Et cetera, et cetera. I don't even feel like talking about this because we can solve this problem potentially in all respects. But for this, it will already not be sufficient to take just separate steps, use separate methods of improvement. There is a need to introduce fundamental changes. We need a new model of development, but it will not work if not brought forward by a new democratic elections. And we have not had them since 1990. That is to say, these people who in the last 20-year period and 10-year period have created such an impasse, I would not rely on them. That's all I can say. And I say this with great pain and worry for Russia, because I cannot think otherwise when it concerns Russia's fate. Uh, you are supporting very oppositional, independent, a Russian newspaper, Novaya Gazeta. And there is an impression in Russia that you are much more closer to the liberal oppositional minority than to the Kremlin authority. Is it true? Well, first of all, you know me well. If I said something, if I gave my word, I always try to keep it. It does not always work, but I always try to make it happen. I am a shareholder in this newspaper, so not only did I promise, but I also committed to support it. Therefore, this may already be a sufficient answer, but nonetheless I will say more, because there is the second part of your question. I consider myself a dedicated social democrat. We must think about social models, about society, how it should be, without going into details, because on this I could also speak at length. This is, by the way, what I am writing about in my book. Uh, 
I think the extremes of capitalism, especially those that happened to develop here, this was very unfortunate for Russia. The treatment was worse than the disease. Communism was clearly associated with the departure from democracy and the violation of human rights. This is another extreme that cannot be tolerated. But people still remember that system and the socialism as we had it. By the way, polls that have just taken place and I plan to write about this. Reacting to the fact that people do not want capitalism as it stands today. People do not want to return to the Soviet regime, but they do want those social and just elements to be present in politics and in the structure of the new society. Therefore, this will be an integrated society that incorporates the best of what capitalism and socialism have to offer. I think this is what social democracy is. And the best confirmation that I have is take international socialism. There is basically social democracy in the entire world. I am always eager to promote this idea. I think this is all. Ну что же, теперь мы поблагодарим вас, Михаил Сергеевич. Thank you so much for your candid interview, and we wish you luck with your new mission. And I will rush to shake your hand to quickly accept your thanks and assume that the work is done.